Let's bring in our legal panel, Fox News legal analyst Mercedes Colin and trial attorney Rachel Self. Thank you so much for joining us. And Rachel, hey, I'll start with you, Rachel. How worried should the president be? Well, the president should absolutely be worried, but denial ain't just a river in Egypt. And what the president should be doing versus what he actually chooses to do are two very different animals on a daily basis. But if a sitting U.S. president is finding himself defending how he paid off a porn star, I mean, isn't he already very behind the eight ball? Mercedes, what's your answer to that? Well, there's two sides to, to the story. One, let's talking about the tapes. A lot of people are asking, could Cohen actually even tape his client? Yes, we have a one consent party in, in state of New York. He could legally tape the president. Then the other side is, and, and when the prosecutors are looking at what was disclosed in the tapes, they're saying, well, wasn't Cohen an agent uh, in, in terms of the president? Wasn't he doing something to benefit the campaign when talking about this hush money to this Playboy model? And then there, that's campaign finance, obviously a violation of campaign, campaign finance laws. But the flip side is, what really is disclosed in those tapes? Frankly, it's a discussion about whether it should be cash or a check, whether this, this maybe this is just a per personal, and not to, nothing to do with the campaign, but rather just a personal interaction between a, an individual and their lawyer and talking about something that could be very damaging, just reputationally, not anything to do with the campaign. And therefore, it's above the campaign finance law. So there's really two sides of it. And each side that are looking at the this defense saying that Cohen really lacks credibility. The prosecutor saying this may be the aha moment that we need because we have someone that's willing to flip on the president. And, and Mercedes, president, well, go ahead. You're, no, but I mean, the issue here is that we're not talking about just an individual with his lawyer. We're talking about the president of the United States. And basically, he's been lying and lying and lying. And he's lying so much about so many things. And ultimately, then tapes come out about it. And everyone's just finding it acceptable. Mm -hmm. I hold my seven year old niece to a higher standard with regard to telling the truth versus telling a lie. So I think that it's very interesting. Rachel, that but this here's is the just difference acceptable. that interaction. Here's the big difference, though. That interaction that the president had with Cohen was when he, what this was before he was president. We're talking about, you, yeah, you and I are both attorneys. Not... We're both veteran attorneys. We're talking about a conversation right. between the client and attorney. That's why they're saying that yes, there, there and could the be client two sides and of the story. And the privilege could be doesn't apply to down. the crime fraud exception. There's a crime fraud exception exactly. to this. And the bottom line is a special master was appointed once these documents were seized from the office on April 9th. A special master was appointed to review all of the documents. And they released this recording. They determined that it wasn't subject to attorney-client privilege, most likely because it was in furtherance of a potential criminal scheme and that's why it was released and so i think that there were also a million other documents that were released and what president trump should be very concerned about is what else is in there it's very possible that his son could be indicted for perjury the interesting twist to that is as the president he could pardon his son if his son is indicted for perjury so it's going to really be interesting sure. to see how it fleshes out and, and really the it the investigation is still ongoing, so we really right. don't know uh, right. everything that was released this week. All we know is that it maybe it looks bad. We really don't know at this point if, if it is actually illegal. But we, I do want to talk about credibility. President Trump and his right. lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, say sure. Michael Cohen has blown his credibility in very short order. You have the release of this recording where Mr. Trump and Mr. Cohen mm -hmm. are discussing the payoff of a former playmate, then leaking the assertion that the president knew about this meeting in June of 2016. Mercedes, is right. Cohen some one to believe? Uh, that's a great question because, frankly, as, as an attorney that's been practicing a long time, I've never been, and I've talked to my partners, no one's ever in there actually taping a client. No one even conceives of taping a client surreptitiously, even though we practice in the state of New York and we're we can lawfully do so. So that's one mark against his credibility. But and then there's been this flip flopping about he's Cohen. Not so already in the there's same been. Clean waters. But, he is, Michael Cohen was uh, not playing listen, in the same uh, Rachel, clean waters but we're not that you and I about play that. in we're, 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 Oh, I, I get that. I understand that. And I think there's going to be a lot of credibility issues. But I think it goes to exactly your point, Alicia. This is one step in the process. When you look at that June 9th meeting, you have to determine what phone calls were made uh, before the June 9th. Were there phone calls? Apparently there were phone calls. So there's a phone 
phone log. What was discussed? Who was the individual? Apparently, there was a call made from Donald Jr. to a, to an unknown number. Who was that unknown number? What was said by the by the candidate at the time, President Trump? That was a candidate at the time prior to the June 9th meeting. Was there any statement that he made publicly that said, "I've got great information that I'm going to disclose to you regarding the Clintons"? That was the whole thrust of this June 9th meeting that there was going to be dirt on Senator Clinton in terms of her candidacy. So. All of these things, and when it comes to anybody that's represented a client before in a federal probe will tell you, it is an exhaustive process. The federal prosecutors are incredibly aggressive. They're squeezing and squeezing witnesses down from the, their, the who's in the crosshairs down to an administrative assistant. Rachel will know both of us have, have dealt with clients in a federal probe. It is exhaustive and it's un endless in some in some circumstances. And Rachel, I do know you and want to get Rachel. Really hang on one second, please, because I do know that you want to answer this. But, really answer this. but I do want to bring up the other side of this. Some might be confused by statements made by Giuliani and the president. It was just two months ago Giuliani was praising Michael Cohen. On Thursday, he told CNN that he would have expected something like this from Cohen. That he's been lying not only all week, but for years. Rachel. And this is exactly my point with this. As Aesop said, you are the company you keep. This was not just Trump's one-time lawyer. This was his right-hand personal attorney for over a decade. These two were not playing in clean waters, and what's ultimately going to come out is going to be very, very interesting. And I think that Trump should be concerned, but ultimately speaking, he's had to be concerned about a lot of things, and nothing's really affected him. People really do you know, let things slide when it comes to him. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it fleshes out. I think there are absolutely concerns with regard to other material that might be out there okay. for him. And he should be thinking about that. All right. And we have got to get going. Mercedes Colin and Rachel Self, thank you so much for the discussion, Eric.